Use denied. No, what are you doing to me, phone? I don't want to do that. My phone's giving me a hard time. I'm a go. Ooh, what the hell? Okay, I'm gonna make a. I think I'm gonna so. Yes, I'm gonna do that. All right. While well, I wait for people to arrive. Hey, honey, how you doing? I hope you'll excuse me. I'm going to do the usual thing I do. Wait for more folks to arrive. I'm going to start by making a cocktail. Go over here. And uh, get ready. Get ready. Because you are here. Okay. Bring the camera around. Thanks, mate. I'm glad you're good. Glad you're understanding that I'm going to make a cocktail. Yeah. Ah, should get these ready as well. My little GoPro pal. Okay, okay. Holy shit, I thought that was coming off. Okay. Oh, good there. Okay. Get the mixing lights. The hell is this about? Okay. How does it move? Jello Saptiros. That's full bottle. I want a full bottle. I want an open bottle. Okay. The other thing is the Navy Strength Gin. Which Navy Strength Gins do I have? Uh, Oh, big question. What Navy Strength Gins do I have? Do I only have the one? Did I use up my Navy Strength Gin? Well, that's the only one I can see. So I'll open this. Oh, I have this mental image of me dropping this bottle. It was a very troubling mental image. I don't want to drop a bottle. But it probably wouldn't break or even spill. I don't want to risk it. Then, uh, <laughs> Gin with your citrus lemon juice and uh, some sugar syrup. All right. Do 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 do. Am I ready? I think I'm ready. All right. That one. And the sugar from the liqueur has kind of gummed up the thread, but it's okay. All right. The 
37.5 mils. Well, we'll say that much. Here's the boot. Well, that then. I'm just checking something on here. Huh. Do, do, do. Just looking for one more little bit of direction from this website. Uh, Okay. Uh. All right, okay. let's make this then. Uh, it's going to a half an ounce. Two quarters of an ounce. Twenty-two and a half mils yellow chartreuse. And a little bit of this. Noisy fucking cart. What are stupid goddamn hoons doing in my neighborhood? Alright, that's all good. Do these things. Switch that off. Let's actually, while I think of it, we're going to peel here. That really didn't work. Okay, maybe take a little bit of this pith off if I can. Great Australian tradition of taking the pith. Okay. That's pretty pathetic, but I'm just gonna I go with it. What am I doing? I'm doing crazy stuff is what I'm doing. Oh, what am I doing? I'm getting confused. Well, we'll try this one more time.
do this. And throw this. Yeah. I don't know to do that. Okay, let me get a little publicity for it. Don't want to turn now. All right, now do talky talky stuff. Well, let's turn this thing. Point it up there. Get reflected light rather than harsh in the facey light. All right, let's do this. Okay, ready to go. G'day cocktail lovers. This is a little rip I made. I'm calling a pink Negroni sour. Well, it's gonna call it pink. It didn't go that pink. Maybe it's got a little bit of a blush, a Negroni blush, maybe I'll call it. But I baked it off a recipe I found called a white Negroni salad. Now, regular viewers might be going, wait a sec, Negroni, he hates Campari. Is he using Campari? No, I am not using Campari because I hate Campari. But the recipe I'm basing this off also did not use Campari. So I guess it isn't just me. As I commonly do, I took a. As I commonly do, I took a recipe I found that sounded interesting, and I riffed based on what I had essentially. So the recipe for the white Negroni sour on the Diffus website called for uh, a quinoa or quinine heavy aromatized wine, and I decided instead of being white, I'm going with uh, a red uh, aromatized wine. This is Unica Rosa. This is a rosé vermouth from South Australia. It's Kind of a mid-range in terms of sweetness, like your average Blanc uh, vermouth, but it's made with red grapes, so it's kind of this rose colour, which is quite nice. That's where the faint pinkness, the faint glow of this is coming from. So I'm using that instead of the Kina aromatised wine. And it also called for Suze or similar liqueur. I'm going with uh, yellow chartreuse, which is not an exact match, but it's quite close, and I thought that's what I'd use. And it, there's quite a heavy pour of navy strength gin in this. I'm spoiled for choice in this front. I'm going with one of my favorite locals, Brogan's Way. They call this, what's this? The, uh, I'm looking for the name, the Royal Blood Gin. So 57% alcohol by volume, which is standard navy strength. It's like 57% and up. And it's quite nice. And it's a sour, so there's lemon juice in here as well. And I went with a foaming agent with my trusty wonder foam. You use egg white or aquafaba, and there's a lot of these foaming agents you can get commercially as well. I find this easier and less mess.
After all that build up, I want to taste this little number. Mm. Yeah, there's just the very light bitterness, nothing remotely as if you used an aperitif like even Aperol, let alone Campari. But I think hardcore Negroni purists would be going, that's no shot on Negroni. Like, yeah, dude, maybe I didn't name the original one and it's marketing as much as anything. And as I said before, I don't like Campari, so I don't like Negronis. So I don't really care if Negroni lovers hate this. But uh, I actually, I actually get where you're coming from, that why it's marketing. It's like in the 80s, 90s, everything put in a V-shaped cup was called a teeny, as in a martini, and it isn't. The Negroni's gotten so popular, people are calling drinks Negronis that at best bear a passing resemblance to a Negroni, and that's what this is, I guess. But I like how this has turned out. Here's how I made it. In a shaker, put one and a quarter ounces or around 37 and a half mils of Navy Strength Gin, then three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils of Rosé Vermouth. Then I added 22 and a half mils, three quarters of an ounce of yellow chartreuse, and the same amount again, 22 and a half mils, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then I added about a third of an ounce or 10 mils of sugar syrup. I was already to add ice and shake, and I remembered the foaming agent. I, so I added a few drops of the Wonder Foam. Then I put the shaker together, shaking it good and hard, shaking for at least 20 seconds, because I want a nice foam head to come out on this. And I strained it into a rocks glass over a big chunk of ice. All of which comes together to make my blushing Negroni sour. And yeah, one more apology to Negroni lovers. This has only got a passing resemblance to a Negroni, but it's a weird mix. It's like elements of uh, gin sour and also elements of the martini with the gin and the aromatized wines. So it's in this middle ground of all those things. And, you know, using a Negroni as a hook to hang it on is as good as anything because honestly, taste-wise, This has come together really well. Most of all, this reminds me taste-wise of a gin sour, like a gimlet. So I love a gimlet, so I'm not complaining. But bear in mind, that's what you're getting if you make this. It's quite a ways removed from a traditional, uh, forgot the word. Why do I forget the word? It's quite a ways removed from a traditional Negroni, but I'm okay with that. And honestly, I think if you try it, you'll be okay with it too, because it's pretty tasty. So maybe you give it a go, but whatever you do, I hope you take care of yourself. And I do hope to see you again soon. Until I do, I will say cheers. Oh, I am all over the shop, honestly. And it's still all quiet on the Western front, but that's okay. Maybe I'll do my new obsession. Not new obsession, it's an old obsession. Red Dead Redemption. Do 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 what was I doing? Looking for this little skewer is what I was doing. All right. All right, all right, all right. Need to cut some more pith off this one. What you doing to me, bro? Why'd you get so much pith off, bro? It's bitter, bro. I don't like it. Nice. See? That's like I can be like oral wallpaper for you, honey. You can muck around and do all sorts of things. It's not like you have to be watching me eagle-eyed the whole time. I didn't do that much that's visually interesting, I don't think. 
Although, where was this silly little game? It's this silly little cricket game, Cricket Fever. That um, Microsoft have put on the browser. Wait, where are we? Is it this? There we go. That's it. I got they putting an ad in and everything. Be like, I'm ready. Play a silly little cricket game. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Ooh, slow ball first up. They're the ones that usually get me, the slow balls. Not that one. Hoiked it over for six. Yep, ground ball there. Just a run. Oh, no. Oh, hit the scoreboard. Devastating. Oh, hitting the other side of the scoreboard. Straight down the ground. Oh, three in a row. Always a bit humiliating from a ball, for a ball of that. Having said that, he'll probably get me out next ball. Ooh, just a single that time. The least common scoring in this game. Can't get run out in this game. Oh, and out. Ugh. No way I'm playing an ad on the stream. Let's see, try and keep one ear open. Nice. Yes. Well, I'm not subtle if I'm angry about something. All right, let's. Wait, what am I doing? I'm going to have one more go at this silly cricket game. Oh, come on. Here we go. All right, hoik in that one. I'm trying to look if there's a pause button here. I don't know if there is. He doesn't put a pause button in a game. So I don't even know if I'm sharing the screen properly. I am. Okay, good. Hoik in that one too. There we go. I just did particularly badly last game. I'm determined to do better. I've still never got to 100 in this game. Kind of want to get to 100 in this game. A couple of cheeky runs. Oop, that was a bit fast. That almost caught me off guard. Running three, running four. There we go. Oof. Oh, split the fielders. There we go. How many were running this time? Three. No, that was four. No, just a single. Well, I'm halfway to my goal. I've just been kind of obsessed with getting to 100 in this game. It's kind of funny, all the twos they run in this game. If I had control over where the batters run, I would not be running all these twos. These would all be singles. The twos look way too risky, but it's automated. I don't actually control it. Oh, shit, that just out of the blue came really fast. All right, stop sharing. Fuck that. Stop it. Hey, you Richard. Yeah, it's Tuesday for me too. Wish it was the long weekend already, but it isn't. I'm just thinking of it. Hmm. Hmm. That's a pretty good sour, actually. Oh. What are we doing here? Oh, a little bit. I need to uh, 
is each of these are off. This is the rest of there. There. Okay. Switch it off. I'm almost out of battery on my phone. But that's okay. Hoodie, hoodie, who? Wah. Ah. Goodness gracious me. So it was on the Diffid's guide, actually. Yeah, look, look, okay, I'll share what I'm looking at. This is a website where I get 90% of my cocktail ideas. They kind of rotate what's on the front page. Like this one, Fanchuli, I just added to my list recently. Wait a sec. What did I add to my list recently? I added the meditation and the fanchuli. Okay. And the banana Toronto and the old dog new tricks and the San Francisco and the Pearl of Puebla. Okay. Wait, so what's this one? Old aroma. Whiskey, Amaro, white creme de cacao. I mean, honestly, that's kind of yummy sounding. Garnish with a caramelized pecan. Good Lord. Uh, I mean, you know what? I might make that one. What's it? An old aroma. We can only... Uh, Oh, you want an Italian Amaro. I need to check if my Amaro is... Italian. Hey, Ray's, what's happening? This is me exploring cocktails that I might make, add them to my... Anyway, so I'm going to add this. It's probably just a short, really. Old Aroma. And let's see, make that a short, I think. So it's one ounce of whiskey. And three quarters, okay. Three quarters ounce amaro, half ounce wet creme de cacao. And I say chop a bit as two dashes chocolate bitters. Sev. That's another one to do somewhere down the line. Oh, yeah. Hell, just before I saw that, the bridge accident in uh, Baltimore. Someone actually got video of it. So there's, so there's obviously someone on the bank who just saw this container ship heading straight for the support for the bridge. And they've gone, holy crap, that ship's going to hit the bridge. And they've got their phone out and are recording it. So you go, um, yeah, the ship hits the support, takes it out, and the bridge just collapses. When I heard there was a bridge collapse, I thought, oh, is this going to be a wake up call for Americans and their decaying infrastructure. But, you know, a ship hit it. So. All right. Are there any other? What's a Tusetto number two? Gin, Sherry, Maraschino, how much is that in mils? One twenty fourth. Uh, the fact one one mil. Jesus Christ. Dash of absinthe. Just got it. the tuxedo. Oh, is this a riff on a tuxedo? All right, that's a tuxedo riff.
Oh my god, this guy's so fucking fussy with his measurements. 1.25 mils of a sugar syrup. Why are you gonna fucking taste that, honestly? Yeah, I didn't see the cars go into the water. I just saw the bridge collapse. And there almost had to be cars on it. Pretty intense. All right. All right, to set to number two, I'll make full length because it's a little bit complicated. To set to number two. That's double S. Okay, I can fix that. To set to number two, got to make that a full length video. Okay. All right, what am I doing? It's 45 mils old Tom gin. Old Tom gin. 45 mils sherry. Okay, what else we got? I'm gonna go 7.25 mils maraschino got that wrong and what else am I putting in here one dash absinthe one dash orange bitters one and dash Ab synth on a dash orange bitters and three drops of saline. Oh, I didn't put any spaces in there. Yeah, save that. Yeah, I don't want to run out of ideas. So I always take note of ideas. Hey, Chog. Yes, I am streaming. Did I say hi, Strictly Sega? I think I did. Ah, very high ABV cocktail. Um, this one, a little bit, not super. It did have Navy Strength gin in it. It's pretty yummy. This is actually probably getting me pretty drunk. Okay. Wait, where is it? I want to go to the front page. What's an Italian? Oh, it's coffee. I'm not going to like it. Galliano. No, I'm definitely not going to like it. Fuck that. Is this one? Doctor. Rum. Oh, Swedish punch. Okay. You know what? That's probably enough adding to my thing for now. Oof. I'm going to have to rinse these things out because I made a sour. And I want to reuse my glassware and ice, 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 baby. And so, yeah, what's the other one? Because I had another one that was also the prize fighter. Okay, this is a pretty strong one. Whiskey, mezcal, amaro, and yellow chartreuse. That's my next one. It's pretty strong. <laughs> oh, it's obviously a hip hop line. Cooking MCs like a pound of bacon. Uh, I'm uh, not that down on the dish. You know what? I'm going to make my other cocktail video. Straight away and then just get Dune. Anyone wants me to play Barbie Horse Adventures for Boys? Let's get it. So good. I guess I'll just take a second because the bathroom's just out here. 
Oh, is that Ice Ice Baby? Okay. See? I don't even know. Okay. Done some things, done some things. Done some things. Okay, going to make in secondo rather boozy cocktail. Okay. What the hell does that? Uh, not sure if anyone. I don't watch Q and A anymore because it just pisses me off. Oh yes, investors. You know what? All you'd have to do for me to get less aggro to investors is if there was no tax breaks. The fact that our people are getting tax breaks to destroy the housing market is fucking ridiculous. And just government after government with bad policy. Oh, okay, we put. There's an eight strength gin back. We get the mezcal out. We put this away. Right. And what do I want? I think I want my whiskey. Do to do where to put my okay, I'm going absolutely poppy, obviously. Hey Kelsey. Uh, the prize fighter. Yes, oh, Roy Whiskey. You know, okay, I'm just going to use this whiskey this time. It's a good whiskey. Which is actually end of rye and single malt. I didn't do another number with day. We want. Just trying to finish this bottle of Amara Montenegro. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, let's get ready. Speaking in stupid voices. Oh, you know what, my chocolate pictures, there they are. Okay. Whiskey. Uh, right. Okay, let's... No, that's just done. So I finally emptied that. Well, okay. 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 Let's get everything running.
do this uh, quickly. And then I just sit down and look. Maybe pay a red dead redemption. Who knows? Let's just do that. Whiskey. Uh, men gather it right. Ooh, that mezcal smells so nice. It's like really nice barbecue smoke. And finally. All right. Oh, the smoke coming off that mezcal is something else. Okay, put the lids back on before I knock some motherfucking thing over. Oh, empty the bottle just in time for recycle. Um, oh, I want to put ice in there. Let's get a dance. You wanna walk your way? Sit in Motown Point, fucking out there. All the ice. What's going on? Uh, let's do this. Stir this little sucker. Count up to Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's taken pretty good, actually. Let's get away as uh, this here. Uh, maybe. All right, strain this in. Dunzo. Okay. Got that done. A short video, so in theory, because the talking has to be less than 60 seconds. In theory, I should get this done in less than like two minutes. Unless I fuck up what I'm going to say multiple times, which honestly, you know, happens. All right. Let's try. Okay. That's ready. And we're all ready. G'day cocktail lovers, this is a smoky little number called a prize fighter, built around a split base of rye whiskey and some mezcal, very eager to try this. Mm, some nice smooth booziness in there, and just that barbecue smoke flavour of the mezcal comes together really well. Here's how we make it. In a mixing glass, we put one ounce or 30 mils of rye whiskey, then one ounce or 30 mils of mezcal, or that with three quarters of an ounce, around 22 and a half mils of Amaro Montenegro, then a quarter of an ounce or seven and a half mils of yellow chartreuse, rounding things out with just a few drops of chocolate bitters. Add ice to the glass, stir that for 20 to 25 seconds to chill and dilute the drink, and then strain that into a rocks glass over a big chunk of sexy clear ice. 
Don't forget to check my channel for the easy guide on how to do your own sexy clear eye and enjoy a drink like this, the prize fight. Cheers. Always doing the self promo. Not always, I should do it more. Not actually that good at it. All right, now I'm just I'm not going to make any more videos tonight. May or may not drink more alcohol. Who knows? I'm a weird guy. Okay. Giving myself some space in the space frame. Goodness me. There to Lynn Dune. What do you find typing? Hello, Nintendo Lunchbox. You're on the West Coast. Noish. So we're saying we saw it on the, the investors. Greeny dude, good answer about difference between selling investment property and being homeless and living in your house. Yeah. Investors just shaking their heads like they couldn't give a fuck. Yeah. And that if someone who's got just that huge number of investment properties is a fucking leech. It's that simple. Systems geared to help them. You're yelling at the screen. We have to sell your 15th spare house. That's got to, yeah. It's a combination of things that actually can just be summed up by bad government policy when it comes down to it. That's that's what's behind the housing crisis. A multitude of bad government policies instigated by various governments. And no one has the guts to go, hey, there shouldn't be tax breaks for hoarding properties. Or, hey, I know the corporates want us to keep um, really high levels of immigration because uh, that depresses wages and we don't like going against our corporate overlords. Not putting the infrastructure in place to support your shitty policies is what's causing all the problems. Well, it wasn't even the negative gearing. It was it was the most extreme and egregious John Howard tax boondoggle that I believe doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And because I don't know, Labor didn't have the guts to go hard and all the media pushed the conservative talking points so hard. It really hurt them. Oh, no, Dr. Abigail, bad migraine and needing to eat. Oof. I feel sorry for you. My big adventure today was going to the doctor to get um, some biopsies done to... <laughs> So I get the right topical cream for these um, itchy bits. And no, it's nowhere embarrassing. It's like one on my shoulder and one on my tongue. I mentioned this at work and they're like, okay, stop. Stop talking about your rashes. And I mean, it's, it's not, it's nothing bad. But it's probably psoriasis. But biopsy just to diagnose it. So I put the right topical cream on it. Now, my nipples for a change are doing fine. But yes, I got stabbed a couple of times by a doctor today and then a stitch or two on each of the stab holes where he took. It's, it's like skin cores. makes it sound like uh, Arctic scientists doing ice core samples. He was doing a skin core sample. Psoriasis is a skin disease that causes a rash with itchy, scaly patches, commonly knees, elbows, trunk, and scalp. Okay, mine are on the trunk. How do you stop psoriasis from spreading? Avoid alcohol. Well, fuck that. Decrease stress. That's not completely in my fucking control. Main cause of psoriasis. An injury. 
possibly started by an insect bite. Drinking excessive amounts of alcohol. Oh God, he's going to ask me how much alcohol I drink. Oh no. What clears psoriasis fast? Cortical steroids. All right, well, we'll see, I guess, what the doctor ends up recommending next week. Oh, I bet. I, I kind of still um, uh, want to see it in IMAX. I did see it in the big screen cinema. Oh, Nintendo Lunchbox. Do you like the new Roadhouse movie on Prime? No spoilers. I, I actually saw it. I got a preview of it months ago. I know. You so started laughing when I said someone's going to tell me to not drink alcohol. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, Interstellar in IMAX would be really full on too. I love that movie. Yeah, spoiler. For, it's not... Uh, a spoiler for a major event that finished a couple of days ago, Safa. Anyone who cares already knows. But I get I get that you were being lighthearted there. Um, um but yeah, I thought I, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal was really quite good in uh the Roadhouse movie. Um I think the one-liners don't all work, but, you know. Oh, yeah, Gravity would be another good IMAX one, actually. I might go and see uh, Furiosa in IMAX, actually. Yeah, Interstellar, I think, was shot with big, very big screens in mind. You don't have to shoot on IMAX cameras to have IMAX in mind when you make your films. Mm. But yes, uh, I guess Furiosa is probably the next film that um, is going to tempt me into going to a cinema. Because they kind of got me hooked with the ads, which is a warning sign. <laughs> I love that. So Gravity and IMAX only made you want to go into space more. Yeah, kind of like The Martian. I don't know that The Martian put anyone off the idea of space travel. You know, Heine and Sava swapping the race costume. See, I don't even get the references. But that's cool. Mm. Oh, wow. With one eye, going to IMAX is like watching a tennis game. Yep. I, um, first time I went to an IMAX thing was a very long time ago, you know, when they were all just like nature documentaries. I've said this before. It was James Earl Jones narrating Africa, the Serengeti. And it was at the IMAX that doesn't exist anymore in Darling Harbour in Sydney. Oof. That's really bad when even organising the delivery is um, uh, being fucked up by a migraine. <laughs> Martian just put you off eating potatoes right, in case someone's growing it in their own shit. I used to the Great Barrier Reef, yeah. But I remember, and I think it's because my seat for this Serengeti thing was quite close to the screen and also possibly because it was my first IMAX exposure, so I was ready for it. But I did find myself realising I have to do that to see everything. If I just look ahead, there's stuff that's right out on my peripheral vision. Which I was kind of doing that to see everything. And that's with two eyes. Oh, wow. The Pixar movie Brave in IMAX. I have seen quite a few. I've seen the recent Star Wars movies in IMAX. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else did I see? I think I did see Fury Road in IMAX actually. Um, but it's like, yeah, big event movies. I've gone and seen them in IMAX. Ah, the Shackleton Explorer doco in I, and there's a thing in the early days, that's what got shot on IMAX documentaries. Ah, yes, Avatar. I may or may not have seen the original Avatar in IMAX. You, that much Scottish, uh, uh, brave on the big screen, an overwhelming volume of Scottish coming at you. Yes, that that, that is uh, the risk with Brave, the just overwhelming amount of Scottishness in it. So weird. I actually took a sick day today. I mean, I probably didn't need to, but I just did. So I was lounging about at home when I wasn't actually at the doctor surgery. And I felt just low-key guilty all day that I wasn't working. Yeah, I was just watching... TV, watching some shows. I watched Asteroid City, the movie. Um, and uh, just a few shows. And um, yeah, I was, I was just kind of low-key guilty a lot of the time, wondering if anyone was sort of trying to find me at work. You know, even though I had an out of office on What did I think of Asteroids City? I, look, I thought it was entertaining. Uh, for those who don't know it, the uh, filmmaker just deliberately makes everything unrealistic. The sets are extremely obviously sets. Uh, the acting is not naturalistic. The color scheme is not naturalistic. Uh, and there's even this framing thing where you have Brian Cranston at the start, like presenting a TV show about a stage play that's called Asteroid City. And then there's the movie. Anyway, it, it's weird. If you don't like weird movies, you're not going to like it. Um, I did actually find it entertaining. And it was just, uh, yeah, it, they're, they're describing it as a play in a theater. And so, uh, makes the conscious choice that all the sets for the film are obviously fake sets. The lighting's very fake and the acting's non-naturalistic. Uh, and I mean, I actually did like it. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's just a bit weird. I heard of that one. I think... Yeah, that's on one of the streaming services. Jim Gaffigan's movie, Linoleum. Yes, I heard that was a bit of a weird one. It might be fun to watch. Oh, yeah, you remind me, Safra. I think I've seen several um, Marvel films in IMAX. Maybe even some DC ones. When I've gone, it's just been for big spectacle films. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, but yes, Asteroid City is a deliberately weird film, uh, just absolutely toying with the conventions of filmmaking. Like 99% of filmmaking is trying to create some illusion of reality. All of this is, none of this is real. It's all really fake. This is a fake thing you're watching. It would get tiresome if all movies or even many movies were like that. But, you know, because this is like a one-off. It's like, eh, you know, it's having a bit of fun being artistic and stylized with the film. Why not? Now, God, and the filmmaker just loves working with the same actors again and again and again. Um, kind of funny when filmmakers do that, I think. 
Well, it's, I, I'm going to go with yes and no, Safa. IMAX is definitely a fun way to see movies. Uh, but um, I, I don't have the... Actually, the IMAX is not far from where I work. I could go before work. I might even do that um, uh, for Furiosa. If, if they're doing early screenings, go to a really early screening and then go to work. Yeah, Wes Anderson does do stuff differently. Um, was that one a couple of years ago set in the French newspaper? I didn't like that. I did not like that. Oh, God, I saw Bottle Rocket in the cinema. That was the first uh, film with those um, uh, brothers in it. Um, I wonder which weird stalker that was anyway. Um, yes, I saw, I actually saw Bottle Rocket in the cinemas. Was it Luke and I'm, I'm forgetting their names. French Dispatch. That's the one. I did not like that at all. The, again, the non-naturalistic thing that, I don't know, bits of it worked for me, but overall, I did not like the French Dispatch. It, like, annoyed the shit out of me. It was weird because there were individual scenes I liked. Yeah, Owen and Luke Wilson. Thank you. Actually, that's probably a good average. Liking every second was Anderson movie. Um, like, Because what was that one in the hotel? I like that one. Good work on picking up on the grammar and the troll, Dr. Abigail. The funny thing was if they... If if that particular loser didn't just keep spurning, you know, I would ask them like, well, I mean, I know I am, but um, what 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 particular lie are you upset about? Ah, yes, Grand Budapest. I really enjoyed Grand Budapest. That was very good. Um. Oh, yes, I like Darjean Limited. I don't think I saw Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, I know. It's just such a broad sweeping statement. You're a liar. And I go, well, I know. Oh, yeah, Royal Tenenbaums. I saw that way back when it came out. Uh, I did actually like that too, yes. Um, Life, Life Aquatic is kind of in the mid for me. I didn't like Life Aquatic as much as all the others, but I certainly didn't dislike it like I dislike French Dispatch. Um, <laughs> excellent question, Safa. No idea is my answer. The tickets are more expensive at IMAX, so maybe all the popcorn and stuff is too, but I almost never get popcorn at movies. I would have at June if they'd given me the fuckable popcorn bucket, sandworm mouth. So, but they weren't selling them. So I was incredibly disappointed. So, yeah, that would have been the first time in a while I got popcorn at movies, but they didn't have the sandworm bucket. So, Hello, Hannah. How are you this fine evening? Uh. All right. Hannah, just do a search on June popcorn bucket. Some cinemas had this limited edition top on the popcorn bucket that was meant to look like a sandworm mouth. But you look at it and you go, yep, someone's going to stick their dick in that. Ghostbusters trap. Again, Nintendo Lunchbox. All I want to know is, can you stick your dick in it? They were only a USA thing. That may well be the case. Certainly didn't see them anywhere here, which was very disappointing. Uh, Safa, an IMAX cinema is just more expensive to run. 
but yes, it's the biggest screen and it's the specialized projection stuff. And an IMAX cinema is much more expensive to build and operate and maintain. Oh God, every now and then you see plushies and you just go, ooh, someone's going to stick their dick in it. Like I even saw some slippers once. They were Pokemon slippers and it was a Snorlax and the bit where you meant to put your feet in, it just looks like a Snorlax vagina. And it's just like, oh my God. Oh, it's a Bulbasaur as a hole in top. Yeah, yeah, no. All, all the plushie needs is a hole in it, and there's definitely someone fucking it. It's 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 just unavoidable. But yeah, these Snorlax slippers, where you put your foot in, just look like a Snorlax vagina. Snorlax lying on their back. Bill Murray going through a new phase of comedy during a life quite lost in trans. I really like lost in translation. Uh, you can pick a lot of flaws in that movie with the characterizations and whatnot but broadly i really like that movie that's like sophia coppola's second or third directorial effort so and, <laughs> so the bubble saw's got a perfect dick size hole no um sometimes i think the makers do it accidentally but there's definitely someone sticking their dick in it. So strictly say IMAX is expensive, computer needs to be powerful. Yeah, it's just all the projection stuff is more expensive and whatnot. Oh, it's, I, God, I might even have it on disc. It's worth seeing Dr. Abigail. Uh, it's, um, like I said, I, I think it's Sophia Coppola's second or third directorial effort. It's really well done. Oh, yes, and IMAX cinemas have to pay a license to be IMAX cinemas too, yeah. So, okay, it's not just you. Every staff member went, well, someone's sticking their dick in there. There you go. Oh, you actually have a copy and just haven't watched it. Yeah, we well, have the time. Yeah, it's 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 worth it. It is, there is, the whole thing, Bill Murray, Fish Out of Water in Japan and whatnot, and there are a couple of bits, I won't spoil anything, but there are a couple of bits where I was going, Really, that might be laying on the Japan weird thing a bit heavily there. Um, but broadly, I really like the movie. If someone wanted to find flaws and go, oh, blah, 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 I'll say, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I'm not claiming it's perfection. I'm not claiming they don't make some questionable choices in it. I'm saying that as a film, I quite enjoyed it. Chog, you're away from it. Oh no. Sick household, damn it. Looking after two people in a remote town in a rural New South Wales. Well, that's a goddamn adventure, man. More power to you. I hope the Chog household uh, gets better. Oh yeah. No, Scarlett Johansson, quite young Scarlett Johansson, and she's extremely good. And she's gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. And you saw a TikTok. Autocorrects yet to figure out how often I swear and how rarely I call about ducks. Uh, and if you yes, Dr. Abigail is probably usually talking about ducks. Oh, yes, helpful tip. Lots of people miss up then and then. I mean, something is more expensive than something else with an E. Uh, and then I went to a regular cinema, then I went to to an IMAX cinema. That's one that catches out a lot of people. It's worth practicing. I mean, I think it's, uh, 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 highlighting that is done in a positive sense. So you get toddler and daycare brings their, oh, oh yeah, no, I remember that. Daycare, school, germ factories, absolute fragging germ factories. My fucking kids gave me measles. No, chicken pox, not measles. Because I ne I never had chicken pox. There were no chicken pox outbreaks in Dubbo when I was a kid. Um, but, yeah, in uh, daycare, um, my littlies, they were literally, they were very littlies at the time, both got chicken pox. And I was like, oh, I've never had it. And everyone was like, oh, getting chicken pox as an adult is terrible. And I did get it. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. For a couple of days, it was like I had the flu. I was feverish and shaky. 
Um, itchy as fuck. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. The Nickelodeon documentary, Quiet on Set, documenting abuse in the kids' shows. Sounds nightmarish. <laughs> Dr. Gobo, you've never had a situation where what I could replace fuck with duck. <laughs> Oh, God, yes. Retail, you're just surrounded by... Just anywhere in the crowd, you get sick people. I feel like the Darling Harbour IMAX was the first one in Australia. That was the first time I saw IMAX. I Look, since COVID, I think I've been to the movies... No, three times. It was for June Part 1, Barbie, last year, and June Part 2, this year. So in the last four years, I we used to, Mrs. Anger and I used to go to the cinema once every month or two. So five to ten times a year, we'd go to the cinema. Uh, and then in four years, I've been three times because of COVID, because I hate crowds and recirculated air. <laughs> yes, you don't want to send your little people into retail, even grosser than childcare. Used to work in hospitals, never got sick because everything's cleaned. Ugh. Yeah, well, no one washes their fuck. The general public are filthy and touch things and don't wash their hands, definitely. Yes, current biggest IMAX is Melbourne. It's where I saw all the new Star Wars movies. And they would do that thing, I'd tell you, I would, because they would start screening at midnight. I'd go to one a couple of hours before I was due at work and then go to work. Parents bring them in, hand you wet things being in their mouth. Oh, no. Again, I was having this conversation the other day because I've just gone through the phase of getting all the Facebook reminders of what I was posting on Facebook four years ago in the early days of COVID when we were just realising this was a world-changing event and a lot of people were still in denial. But I, I remember from the very early days, um, people who were arguing that schools should stay open because little kids are very resilient and at very low risk of serious complications from COVID. Neglects to mention what you'd be exposing the teachers to. But I saw people talking about how, you know, kids would be careful and, like, wouldn't do, like, sharing germs things. And I was like, you don't have kids, do you? Or if you have kids you're a fucking moron and don't understand kids because you've got a little bunch of kids together and, you know, COVID, you can get COVID. You're just going to get kids in the playground spitting on their hands and going, I've got COVID and chasing other kids. It's just what they do. Fucking ridiculous. Oh, you like the extreme screen ones? Yeah, I do. I, I have gone to that in the past. I like gold class at Village. Oh, man, the gold class where I saw uh, June 2 had the sound system that rattled your bones it was perfect because the sound design in June 2 is uh, incredible. I I was not, I'm scratching my nose. Like, I'm laughing my nose. Um, also, it's just me here. I'm not giving my germs to anyone else. Kids are resilient. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's uh, the, the biggest trouble with uh, COVID was the, the lottery element of it. Um, you've been to the four, is four, 4D cinema the ones where they there's a physical element to it, where they, they use air and other things to um, fake uh, physical things? Yes, the Boomer Duma was particularly brutal on old people. Yes. Little people put their mouths on anything. Yes, that is true. Oh, yeah, no, I bet but visual impairment means sound becomes that much more important. Oh, yeah, freaking COVID deniers were saying everyone should get it. And they say it for measles, and measles has a, a whole spectrum of complications, including death. Oh, there you go. Only built in the early 2000s that only have that older census. Well, yeah. Oh, the one I 
go to has been refitted. I know that. Oh yes, so yeah, Hannah, seats move. Yeah, I, I remember seeing a, a thing on um when I went to Disneyland, they had a honey I shrunk the kids 4D thing. And they had, it's a very clever thing because besides vibrating seats and whatnot, they're doing stuff with there. There's one bit in the movie where rats you had 3D glasses and rats ran out of the screen. And then there were these air vents. And they just had, I think, little bits of fabric on them. So when the air vents blew, this fabric sort of flapped on your legs. And with the visual of the rats running out and this thing just tickling your legs was actually a really good illusion of rats running past your legs. I don't know. You did dog grooming, which was still essential. So you got really busy. Noise. My personal favorite was bottle shops was still essential. Plus, all all the booze distributors were just allowed to deliver. All the restrictions on delivering booze got dropped, which was neat. And you got chicken pox at primary. Oh, parent not only sent the kid. Yeah, yeah. There, there are some parents who said, and chicken pox is low risk of complications, but people really underestimate the scope for complications with measles like life lifelong disability including blindness and death are all complications from measles so the young woman didn't count the fact yeah someone had cancer yes and that's the whole thing there's there's a whole bunch of reasons people can be immunosuppressed ah Safa, there absolutely is a measles uh, vaccine, and there has been for decades, getting it back when I was in high school, but because fuckwit anti-vaxxers have convinced people it's not important, and um, we are getting higher rates of measles around the world in the last 10 years than we did in the previous 50, and there are a whole bunch of complications. I know. It's almost like they would do a polio party, these people. Hey, Pat, by the way, you're missing a few molars because you got chicken pox at the wrong time. Oh, damn, that sucks. I'm missing a few molars because I didn't look after my teeth and they got rotten and had to get extracted. That's on me. Well, actually, you know what? I say it's on my childhood dentist who was a fucking sadist who would drill with no anesthetic and severely traumatized me and so i didn't go to a dentist for over a decade pat i am fine good buddy how are you all right I'm just a uh, little bit a little bit gassy are you gassy marge is it gassy are you gassy uh Oh, yeah. Yep. And that is true. Uh, 20 years ago, there was almost no measles in the first world. And the progressive uh, fuckery of anti-vaxxers has allowed it to get back in. And so all through everywhere now is a resurgence in measles, which is very dangerous. Pat had the best day. Did you go to wrestling? Is that what you did? So you went to a quarantine station near Portsea. Oh, yes. You can still see some old um, quarantine stations. And, yeah, sometimes it was for smallpox. Um, and they were bad places because when there was a bad outbreak of something life-threatening, the, the people were just locked in till they were all either dead or the last survivors came out. Oh. Chicken pox hit you super hard when you're a teen. Didn't sleep for three days. Oof, yeah. Well, like I said, I felt like I had the flu for about two or three days, fevers and shakes. Itchy as fuck for a week or more. Um, my husband, because they were like toddlers and they couldn't, it was impossible to stop them scratching. Uh, they've both got a chicken pox scar. Uh, my daughter has, not huge, my daughter has uh, one 
on her cheek and my no my daughter has one on her forehead and my son has one on his cheek oh you saw the ghostbusters movie sounds like you liked it big guy oh yes the quarantine places big graves mass graves Yep, there's a few of them around Victoria because there are various ports where ships would come in. And yeah, when there were bad outbreaks, they're just like, oh, you know what you can do? You can all stay locked in this building till you're all dead. Because we didn't have any way to treat that shit. Although, mind you, if you look up the original sort of vaccinations and this was the weird thing like when smallpox was ravaging people i think this this solution may have come in the in like the us um noticing uh women who worked milking cows weren't badly affected by smallpox and they worked out Oh, sorry, you got to, yeah, your migraine, you got to isolate from external stimulus. I get it. Thank you for dropping in. I hope the uh, migraine fades away soon. Ooh, Ghostbusters best movie. Glad you liked it, big guy. Um, yeah, they're always saying they worked out why these women who were milking cows were resistant to smallpox is because they previously had cowpox, which was really benign, but was a related virus so they uh, had developed a resistance to smallpox and so what they were doing was literally uh, this might not be exactly accurate but my understanding is literally what they were doing like they would get like infected scabs off people who had smallpox and they cut someone and sort of slide the scab into the cut and then stitch it up so their body would fight those antibodies and it was like, A, really gross, B, prone to infection, C, some of the people would die from smallpox, but D, some people would develop a resistance to it. So like, yeah, early vaccines vaccines were pretty hit or miss and was a pretty gruesome affair. But sadly, that's how medical science advances uh, on the backs of lots of people who die from experimental treatments. After the fact, looking back, it seems barbaric and horrible. And I mean, it was, but also I don't think there was much alternative either. Um, there was no more clever way of doing it. It's the same with the development of surgery. People just used to fucking die in surgery, you know, and, and surgery used to be performed without anesthetic. And then there was a gradual understanding of anesthetic and there was a gradual understanding of germ theory. So um, how to prevent infection, but all medical um, experiments were uh, experimental. All medical treatments were experimental at one point and a bunch of them didn't work and either had no effect or made things worse, but some of them worked. Yeah, I'm not sure if you get any uh, um, immunity from your blood brother or not, actually. Anti-vaxxers date back to the 700s. Oh, yeah, but that's what I mean. The smallpox, the initial smallpox treatment was freaky as hell. And you could see why people didn't like it. But it was early medical experimentation and what was learned from that process probably saved in the intervening time tens of millions to hundreds of millions of lives. So, you know, it's a funny old world. Well, that, that was pre-anesthetic. The just get someone drunk, which is shit because being really drunk actually doesn't stop you feeling pain and also can bring in other complications with bleeding and whatnot. But that was just it. Like I just watched that series 1883 that amputates someone's leg. They just get him really drunk first. 
So so he passes out, and then they can hold him down. But w- once they get into amputating, dude wakes the fuck up. Um, but also, you just go on the plus side. That's um, that guy's having the worst pain of his life. He definitely won't remember it. A combination of the shock from the level of pain and the alcohol abuse, he won't remember it. But the process is horrific. All right, that's the Ghostbusters Frozen World gets the official Big Pat seal of approval, 10 out of 10. Sounds like a damn good day, man. Enjoy a movie that much. Ooh, I think she might already be gone. I don't know what Maxalt is. Might be worth dropping a line in the Discord. I don't know. Ask if she has ever tried Maxalt. <laughs> I actually caught a... I, I wasn't sure if I was going to stream tonight. I, I had an early dinner with the offspring, pizza and pasta, which was super yummy. I got home and it was still before 8 o'clock, so I decided to do a stream. Um, opium, yeah. I think the thing is people didn't know how to use opium in surgery, but that was the basis because fucking all the good anesthetics are offshoots of opium, basically. What am I doing today? I went to the doctor had dinner with my offspring and now i'm here it's migraine medication it's hit or miss but it was impossible to get for a while okay lazy days oh yeah (laughs) you were gonna cook but everyone's sick so microwave time oh god there was a reading an interview with uh uh, the comedian tig nataro today who in the last 10 years just had a cavalcade of extremely serious health things. And she was saying like, yeah, when things are really fucked up in the hospital, they give you Delorted. That's, that's the top of the line. That's hospital heroin. That's wild. Good case for using folinic acid as a daily supplement. (laughs) Again, that's one of the many things like migraines, like we know so much uh about bodies and whatnot the medicine has inve- advanced to an unbelievable degree in the last hundred years um stuff we took take as commonplace would have been seen as magic in the early 20th century let alone another hundred years prior to that um but then yeah like why don't we know conclusively what causes migraines and how to stop them and how to treat them? Nothing. Pat, you had a hot dog. I mean, you know, that's a nice dinner too. Add pizza. <laughs> Probably going to have leftover pizza for breakfast. I love leftover pizza for breakfast. I put it, uh, he, 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 okay, kids, hot tip. Don't microwave your leftover pizza because it gets chewy and soggy. Don't put it in the oven because it dries out and gets nasty. Put it on a sandwich press, like, you know, your toasted sandwich maker, but don't squish it down. Have have it open a bit and the pizza on the sandwich press and that heats it through and makes the base crispy. If you don't have a good sandwich press, a fry pan on the stove with no, no oil or anything, just a fry pan on the stove and put the pizza slices on that and move them about a bit. It heats it up. It doesn't dry it out. It makes the base sort of crispy. It's fucking great, but a sandwich press is easiest. So I've had a chicken schnitzel, nice. Nintendo had Wendy's chili. (laughs) Nothing funnier than Dr. Scientist going, we don't know why. Uh, We don't know why it do the thing, but it do the thing, and we watched yeah, no, I just don't, no, don't microwave pizza. Leftover rice and chicken. See, now that's good. That's a good microwave meal. That one's a good microwave meal to me. Uh, Hannah, 
I'm just throwing it out there. Next time you want to reheat pizza, put it in a sandwich press or just on a fry pan on, on heat. Uh, world of difference. I, lo I love the visual you're giving us, Chog. Screaming no, falling to your knees and pouring rain. It's a very, very, very nice visual uh, to go with the text. I like it. And again, Hannah, I know the th I know the thing you do. Um, Nintendo Lunchbox Air Fryer is okay for reheating pizza, but I find it does dry it out too much. Seriously, okay, just do a comparison at some point: uh, a sandwich press or a fry pan. Um, air fry would probably be my next choice, actually. But I do think air fryer dries it out too much. Anyway, little kitchen tips on the stream. Who knew we were going to have handy dandy kitchen tips tonight? But again, it does actually come down to what output do you like? Yeah, wrap it in foil in an oven to stop it from drying out. Yeah. And you're in the third camp. Oh, yeah. If you like cold pizza, bring go for it. I will never criticize anyone who likes cold pizza. It's just like, yeah, you know what? I kept something in the fridge cold. I'm having a cold. Just like a sandwich then, really? I know some people will freak out at the idea of cold pizza, but I'll... I'll never sort of poo-poo if someone likes cold pizza. I don't usually have it cold. But I'm not going to criticise someone's choice if that's the way you like it. Well, I definitely think it's a different flavour. It's a different flavour, absolutely. Ooh, you're a cold lasagna fan. See, there you go, Nintendo Lunchbox. Again. To me, that's just like a sandwich. The pasta is taking the place of bread. That's the thing. I think cold pizza is just like a sandwich. Cold lasagna is just like a sandwich. There's nothing wrong with it in my book. I don't, I don't usually do it, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Well, what'd you put on Discord, Pat? I'm just putting it in the wrong one, but that's okay. Ah, uh, more wrestling stuff from Pat. Neat. What was that one? Le Maisieux. Skyrim drinking song. Okay. Noish. Lasagna should be cooked one day in advance, cooled, and then reheated if you want to talk. What restaurants do? Okay. Oh, hot chips, definitely an air fryer. For me, that's that's how to reheat hot chips. Although you can refry them if you want to be refried chips. Pretty well, like I, I went to a place, they called it um three times cooked potato. So what they did with the potato, like say so you potato peel it, slice it up, they boil it, that's cooking it once. Then they bake it, so they've got this crispy skin. That's cooking the second time. And then the third cooking, they deep fry it. Oh, my God. Oh, my fucking God. It was amazing. Ah, oh yes. We were sharing the, the, the don't give a fuck thing. That's a different thing. I love that. As a shock. You guys have leftover chips? Yeah. <laughs> It is it is kind of rare, but no, it does happen sometimes. I'll have a leftover chips. Um, for me, it's the air fryer. Ooh, yeah. Let's see, deep fry them or roast in an oven tray. Um, okay, well, let's swap in our various tips. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so if you're getting fish and chips, you're going to eat the fish first. Um, yeah. 
What are you doing that's small, Pat? A, a small amount of murder tonight? Is that what's happening? Just a small amount of murder? Yes, Mother Forklift. Oh, God, have you seen The um, the Good Place on uh, Netflix? I really like that show. Might even re-watch it at some point. You can't swear in The Good Place. You say, holy shirt and Mother Forker. Good. Actually, Safa, good fucking call, man. Fish and chips on Friday. I'm assuming our local fish and chip place will be open. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, might go for a walk with Mrs. Angry on Friday. A good Friday fish and chips. Relive my Catholic childhood. Oh, I do. Um, chips with mayonnaise. Or actually, I, aioli, garlic mayonnaise. I fucking love that. Yeah, Kristen Bell is very good. I uh, see Hannah's jumped in there as well. Yeah, aioli, uh, a, a garlic mayonnaise. Friggin' awesome. Pat, did you put something different in Discord? Is Okay, putting it there. Oh, gosh. And uh, the AI thing of the, yeah, the, the Dragon Ball creator died. A lot of people had things of um, Dragon Ball comic characters mourning his passing. Yeah, well, chips and um, mayonnaise or aioli was a big European tradition. And I freaking love chips and aioli. It's so good. A really tasty garlic mayonnaise. Yeah. Um, it could happen, but I can't. Because I live in a super Jewish neighborhood. It's just Friday for most of my neighbors. Fresh fish fan. Oh, I am parked on a street corner. Been there 30 years. Nice. Yeah, they park outside a church so the Christians can uh, get the fish. Uh, I do have a really good fish and chip shop near us, maybe. Nice. Chog's retiring. Division three in Lotto. Nice. I forgot it was an Oslotto thing. It was worth a lot of money, wasn't it? What did someone win tonight? Ow. Sorry. The thing in my back just randomly started. Like, not hurting like I'm in terrible pain. It was just a twinge. Just looking up news about the Lotto. No one won it. Okay, I'm getting a fucking ticket next week. It's 40 million next week. All right, I'm retiring, motherfucker. Ah, uh, your parents used to own a fish and chip shop. So, yeah, no, yeah, you only want the good stuff. But, yeah, there is a, a quite good one near near us. It was very happy when it, it only opened, it was like a year before COVID or something. See, COVID absolutely fucked my ability to remember time. Also, I'm old, so that fucks my ability to know time as well. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, Safer and Chog. There's a new IMAX in Darling Harbour. That was the original IMAX, and they knocked it down years ago. Ow. No, I'm really getting fucking twinges in my shoulder now. From It's only twinges. It's not like terrible pain, but it's annoying the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. If, look, dude, we'll do it. If either of us win Lotto, set up a distillery. Uh, you got a fish and chip out on Instagram. It's listening to us. Pat, what else did you put on Discord? <laughs> okay, I've got it. Is This is good. This is Pat as a, that's not Dragon Ball. That's a Naruto character, I think. All right, we've, we've, we've got to see this. This video of Pat. Okay. Just let me let, let me get it together. Discord. Deku's whip Kachan calls me to make fun of me. That sounds sportsmanlike. Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. You know what? I like Deku. It could make a great hero name. Plus, I think it sounds kind of cute. Deku it is! 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna do that again. Look who's what Kachan calls me to make fun of me. That sounds sportsmanlike. Oh, I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. You know what? I like Deku. It could make a great hero name. Plus, I think it sounds kind of cute. Deku, it is. <laughs> oh, excellent work, Pat. I love that. Start talking about questionable things. Oh yeah, um, was that just reminds me of the joke in the Kevin Smith film Dogma, uh, where J Jay and Silent Bob are wandering along, and Jay says something like, um, "You know, why are these women so picky? It's not like hot guys just fall out of the sky." And then I think one of the angels falls down and appears in front of him, and Jay just looks at it and goes, oh. and then looks up at the sky and says, "It's not like hot big titty women just fall out of the sky." Ugh. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that um, early on, uh, the container ship that took out that bridge in Baltimore. That's fucking full. Because fixing that bridge is millions, if not tens of millions of dollars, if not more. And it's obviously important, and it's obviously going to have an absolutely crippling effect on transit of things around Baltimore. Um. There's the immediate horror of people who were on the bridge who ended up in the river, but it's obviously a big thing. Are you Dogma, your favourite Kevin Smith film? Um, this maybe marks me as being old and stuff, but Clerks is probably still my favourite Kevin Smith film. On Nintendo Lunchbox, you missed it? No, there is video of it. Friggin' container ship hit a bridge in Baltimore and took the fucking bridge out. It's full on. So the long-term impacts on Baltimore are going to be incredible. Oh, okay. Hard to get Dogma on Blu-ray. Your copy costs you 70 bucks. Holy crap. Okay, here's the thing. Because I'm Catholic, and so I have, and I had Catholic education. So I think... Just from a plot point of view, Kevin Smith did a big cop-out because I think he also knew that he was doing a cop-out with the central plot point of the angels um, going into a newly consecrated church for forgiveness and, and so they'd be forgiven and that would kill God in a contradiction. And it's like, yeah, I don't know if, you have a poor understanding of theology or you're being just deliberately ignoring a thing, but the angels would not be going into the church with pure intention. So they would not be forgiven. And so the bad thing wouldn't happen. Oh God, Weinstein still sell. And Oh, I think I saw there was an interview on YouTube with Kevin Smith fucking ranting about Weinstein still having control of his film. And imagine people responsible for it. Oh my God! Yeah, that that is legitimately true. Um, how traumatizing it would have been for the people on the boat um, if, if they didn't get killed in the bridge collapse. Oh God! Okay, Pat's posting his TikToks on uh, Discord, and I feel compelled to share them. You think the shit monster was a bigger cop out? Kevin's, did he make a movie called Cop Out? Is that what you're saying? Chog, when I know it's total bullshit. Two numbers off the seven, you get 2640. <laughs> Damn it. You deserve so much more. All right, I'm going to look at Pat's TikTok. Uh, where are we? I'm going to do this. Oh my god, that's like me. Fuck you. Oh my god, oh my god. How did you do that's like a neon thing of me? Oh my god, shut your fucking mouth! Shut the fuck down, bitch! Fuck you! That's fucking the one thing of me! Oh my god, oh my god!
Oh my god. Oh, that did my head in. How did you do that? All right, so there's a movie called Cop Out at Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan, and it was dull. I don't know that one. Okay. I, I, I tell you, a Kevin Smith film that I think gets unfairly maligned is Jersey Girl. I, I think that was a very sort of, I don't know, mainstream rom-com that I think he did fairly well. It kind of got maligned. I thought it was pretty good. Well, that, I swear, it can't be a coincidence. That neon thing looked like it was based on me. It's like some filter Pat's done. Yeah, I, this is the thing. I like dogma, but it's probably just my Catholic education made me really picky. But broadly, dogma is a very good movie, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you like Jersey. I thought Jersey Girl was good. Yeah, a lot of people crapped on it, and I was like, what are you upset about? Oh, yes. I actually like Clerks too as well. Note, I'm saying Clerks because it's an American film and they say Clerks. If someone was talking about someone with that job title in Australia, I would call them a Clark because that's how we pronounce it. Oh, yeah, actually, I do like Chasing Amy. I also get uh, why lesbians don't like Chasing Amy. But broadly, uh, I, I like Chasing Amy. And, yes, uh, George Cam Carlin, so good in Dogma. He was very good in Dogma. Is that like Cry because it wasn't good? I haven't seen Clerks 3. I, if I remember rightly, the plot of Clerks 3 is the two characters saying they should make a movie about their life, and so it's the joke they're making the original Clerks movie. Ah, oh, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, I think, was fun. I actually enjoyed Jay. Oh, you cried because it was so good. Okay, well, now I'm going to watch it. Hey, you're off for the night. Crochet your dinosaur for your boss. Nice. Please take care, Hannah. And I hope your boss, traitor boss, enjoys the crochet dinosaur. Yes, I believe there was a cartoon version of Jane Silent Bob. And hello, Mary Meteor. Dogma cameo. Yes, I agree. The Dogma cameo. Ugh. Dogma cameos were brilliant. They got their start by Smith stealing bosses' credit cards. Nice. I'm trying to think. Carrie Fisher's in Jane Violent Silent Bob Strike Back, isn't she? Her role in Jane Silent Bob was pretty funny. It's the nun who picks them up. First Jane Silent Bob movie, not the second. You think that's his worst movies? Oh, yes, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Not a fan of that one. Okay. And George Carlin generally was fucking brilliant. Actually, you want a real trick because George Carlin's comedy career dates back to the 1960s. You can find clips of him on TV uh, in the 1960s, and it's fascinating because he's a much more conservative comedy style, but you can still see him there. Nintendo Lunchbox, Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes, in the teen show Degrassi, really? I didn't know that. So you reckon the Jane Silent Bob reboot half and half? Okay, you're being nicer to it. Actually, Red State was pretty good. Yes, I agree. I think Red State was pretty good. Mary Media has a pretty good commentary, a little lazy in its writing. Okay. No, I'm not going to watch the comedy gala tomorrow night. It's been on commercial TV and I hate ads. Okay, Pat's put another TikTok. Okay, I want to see what this other TikTok is. Oh, yeah, I agree, Chog. Um, a lot of Carlin's anti-capitalist stuff just got more and more relevant. 
Okay, and I look at another of Pat's TikToks. What's this guy waiting for? The sound's not on. There's no sound. Why is there no sound? Pat doing wrestling and some guy commenting him. But there's no sound. I, I, there's something. I don't know what the problem was. Oh no, I don't think I did see that one. Volga. Um, Mary Metia. I forget where you're from, but the Melbourne International Comedy Festival is on at the moment. And they have a night, they call the Comedy Gala, where a lot of the big names do five minute spots. It's on the ABC. There you go. Still probably won't watch it, but I might. Thanks for the tip. And that's the main reason I'm not going to watch it, because a lot of the times I don't find them particularly funny. Oh, yes. Strictly Sager. Yes, I remember that. Um, TikTok lost, lost, lost the license to a lot of music. So a lot of older TikToks have no sound on them now. Yes, I bet that was it. I thought it was me being stupid, but you're probably right. As a backup, maybe I'm being stupid. Uh, mm. I don't know what, that lime soda is okay. I, I don't mind that at all. Chog, you reckon you could see Carlin could see capitalism involving? Yeah, they say capitalism is pretty fucked. Chog, look, I think it's it's just personal taste. I think there are comedians working now that are way funnier than comedy in the eighties and nineties, but. It's also a personal taste thing. And humor is extremely subjective. So, um, it's, you know, what you find funny is what you find funny. Okay. Pat's put another one. I'm going to see if the sound is working on this one. Um, okay. Let's do this. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. In oh, another sport, wrestling one. The WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing the, the challenger from Atlanta, Georgia, playing it at 220 pounds, the American Nightmare, Cody. When she's on TikTok. Oh, also, okay. I was wondering if this is going to get me content matched on on Facebook. I don't really care. I just care if I get content matched on YouTube. Actually, God damn it. Mary Media makes me laugh more than you is banning it. Um, I love that people studying TikTok in the future. They didn't use words. It was silent dancing. Yeah. I know the Tiki Tokies. I actually do have, I did register a TikTok channel and I never use it. And I'm definitely too old for TikTok. Yeah, I knew there'd be modern comedians you like, but yeah. Are you like the machine? Uh, yeah, as I've mentioned about a million times on the stream, I've got a real soft spot for um, Bo Burnham. I think Make Happy is one of the most technically perfect hours of comedy I've ever seen. He takes so many risks and puts together such a complex show that's 
just laugh out loud funny and has such a powerful ending. Yeah, it's just everything about TikTok. I, don't, I just don't know. Maramita, you knew you were too old for TikTok when the niece uh, caught birth asked, asked you to dab for her to film. Oof. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing about uh, China's not trustworthy, and they're not. Um, but it's just like the excuses the US legislators give are such bullshit. It's just like what only the US government and US companies should be able to abuse the citizens. Uh, okay, sure. Like their argument is actually complete bullshit. What's funny is they're getting paranoid about Chinese uh, cars, electric cars with self-driving elements. That's a an out there risk that the Chinese government has a backdoor into the operating systems on those cars and could use it to cause havoc on US roads. But they could. It's an extremely out there risk, but it, the risk isn't zero. Uh, so, yes, Chinese cars with self-driving elements actually could pose a real risk. I don't think they do, but you can't say they definitely don't. I did hear that, like someone's going to buy Trump's Truth Social and give him give Trump a couple million dollars in liquid money. I caught the Kiwi News, found out they managed to get our spies, put spyware in the national system. <laughs> yeah, it's the idea that it's only China doing that is. Is quite ridiculous. So it's just I, the meme that I, because I love Simpsons memes, which is a bit sad. I think Australians particularly have a soft spot bordering on obsession for Simpsons memes. But I mentioned this in another stream. It was from very early Simpsons, the Itchy and Scratchy Land episode, when the robots are gone haywire and Homer go, it's like shouting at the robots, going, hey, no one ruins our family vacation except me and maybe the boy. And they've done that as a meme where Homer's like the American flag. He's the U.S. government. And Bart is all the American tech companies, Google, uh, Twitter, um, Facebook, etc. cetera. And, and the captions just changed to no one spies on U.S. citizens except me and maybe the boy. And all your private data just gets sold anyway. So it doesn't matter what country the company is in. Yeah, Pat, I'm now paranoid that I'm going to get blocked on YouTube for the music. So I'm not sort of playing anymore. We're discussing stuff in the teens and 20s. Should be trying a sidecar or bee's knees. Talking about prophecy. Okay, Sidecar was one of my early favorite cocktails. I did have a couple of cocktails at the start of the stream, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, I, I don't think it's a fight trigger, Sager. I think it's a conversation. Oh, yeah. But, see, that's the thing. Now you've got someone saying they'll buy Trump's shitty social networking site, Truth Social, for a couple billion dollars give Trump a couple billion dollars so he can pay off his money problems. But that's just money laundering. That's just a fucking scam. The rich just pulling their various scams. Why is my arm hurting? I didn't have anything done to my arm. Norm, norm. That's a deep cut. That's a reference to uh, the show about the Undertakers. Okay, think hard. What was it? I rewatched it not that long ago. Six feet under. Oh, yes, he did get some change about what he has to pay. I did see that too. Yeah, it's the whole world's weird. In fact, anyway, it's 10 o'clock. A bit, a little bit of this line. So to drink, so 
All right, you funky folk, take care of yourself. And uh, I'm going to go sleepy bevers to front up for work tomorrow after not fronting up today and finding out how much I compounded my workload by not going to work for a day. Yeah. And uh, I guess I'll be back on. Oh, 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 Thursday. I'm just telling you, don't miss out. Uh, uh, my friend Dave Blumenstein is coming over. Uh, I've mentioned Dave before because he's a cartoonist and animator, and he's done some animations in the past that um, AZ and I have done voices for. But Dave inherited his grandfather's alcohol collection, and Dave doesn't drink alcohol. And his grandfather had this collection because he ran a bar, but he didn't really drink alcohol. And so Dave is going to bring over weird old bottles of booze that we will both look at and go, check that out. And he's going to ask me, do you reckon that's safe to drink? So Thursday night is going to be a very special stream uh, where we, we will be looking at decades old bottles of booze and whatnot and trying to see if A, they taste any good, B, if they're actually safe to drink. I think it's going to be fun. Dave says he's got some really special stuff. Also, Dave is just an extremely fun and entertaining person. So special guest on Thursday night. Thursday night's probably going to be a long stream. We'll see because I don't have to get up on Friday. But we'll see. I don't, I, I don't want to fuck myself up. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, with a long weekend. Um. But yeah, Dave already sh shared a couple of pictures of some pretty wacky stuff. But he said, "Oh, there's also I'm going, I'm saving up some stuff I'm going to surprise you with." So it's like, cool. We're just going to have some wild shit here on Thursday night. Um, decades old bottles, and by decades I mean 40, 40 to fifty year old bottles of booze. Um, and uh, we'll see what's what. But yes, Thursday's be Thursday's gonna be special. Don't miss out. So I'll see you uh fine folk another time, but uh